Hey guys, it's Kendall. And John. <laughs> and we are the Antonellis. We are here in our home kitchen because these are the days of social distancing and coronavirus. And I really hope someday we're all looking back on this video and I don't know if we'll be laughing, but thinking, oh yay, we're glad that they get to do it back in work. So apologies for no official branding and kids stuff and dogs walking around everywhere. Um, but one thing that's really important to us is that we stay connected, um, although we're all physically distanced. And so you have either purchased for yourself or somebody has purchased for you um, our Cheese 101 in a box. We're gonna do a different video where John and I are gonna taste all the way through it. And when you have all your guests or just you um, nestled up cozy on the couch with a glass of wine, if you will, um, but this video is for those who are prepping the plates. So ideally you have already unpacked all your cheeses um, and you put them all in the refrigerator until it was time to get them out and plate them. I recommend pulling everything out about an hour in advance and plating it. The cheese is easiest to cut when it's cold. So pro tip, cut the cheese when it's cold. Uh -huh, make your jokes. Um, and go ahead and plate it, but you don't want to eat it when it's cold. You want it to be room temperature. So if you start this process about an hour ahead of time, you'll get it done quickly and then just let it sit out until you're ready to eat. So you have already opened up our little gift bag um, of information. This is from our team. So yes, because we're all segmented, they send us a little peace, love, cheese card with, that says to our bosses from your favorite wholesale team. Love you back team. Thanks for packing this up for us. Um, you've already received how you should store your cheese, um, some fun tips for how to cut it. And then later on in our cheese tasting, we should have this out alongside of us um, so we can talk through some of the tastings and pairings. So just note on that. Um, and then last but not least, some other fun info in there, but I wanna make sure that you have this. This is your Cheese 101 tasting menu, which you'll be working through tonight or this evening or heck 9 a.m. if you will. Um, but we're gonna plate in this order. I am using just a standard kitchen plate because it's something all across the United States, most of us have. Um, and we're gonna plate starting at 12 o'clock and then going around clockwise. And later when we do our tasting, we'll do the same thing. So this will be 12 o'clock, one, two, three, four, whatever, all the way around and then we'll do our pairings. All right, so I'm gonna try to speed this up a little bit, but um, if you don't drink, apologies. I'm trying to homeschool two kids and deal with the husband working at home. So I'm gonna play while we're working. Can't go wrong with bubbles. If you don't drink, drink sparkling water, Topo Chico, it's a great match. All right, your first cheese that we're gonna do at 12 o'clock is your plain chev. Um, this will be a local chev that we'll talk about later. I gotta try hard not to talk about the cheeses now because that's what we'll do later. So all of these are portioned for two to four people. It'll be too much for two, it'll be good tastings for four, so somewhere in between, but you don't have to plate it all right now if you wanna put any back. So I would get about a tablespoonful and you're just gonna dollop that right at your 12 o'clock. Mine looked a little shy. John always laughs at me because I never use the exact portions of anything. Like I just, it's like um, um, Cornichelli and like, oh, it's a tablespoon, but mine is not accurate. Okay, that was number one. Um, pairing number one, we're gonna put alongside of it. If you can, pre-drain your pepidus. Um, don't worry if you don't like spicy things. These are not that spicy, sometimes not at all, but go ahead and pull out a pepidou and put it right beside it. I'd leave all the rest, that way you guys can be munching on them later or not. So one, already done, look at us go. Number two, following down on your menu is caña de oveja. Every one of these are labeled um, in your wrappers. So you'll see it says caña de oveja when you get it. Um, this is your white looking cheese. When you're cutting your cheeses, you just wanna make sure that everybody is more or less getting the same equal paste to rind ratio. Um, so don't cut it all down where somebody gets all the middle and somebody's left with that boring rind piece. For instance, if I was cutting this piece for four people, I would go in half first, and then I would do two quarters, oops, to end up with a wedge that looks beautiful and just like this, ready to go. That goes down at about two o'clock, and we are going to pair that with our fig and black tea jam from Quince and Apple. Again, talk about it later. When you're putting pairings on the plate, Try not to get it smothered all over the cheese because later on you wanna be able to taste the cheese without the pairing with it. Um, so I just like putting it as a dollop towards the back. I just dropped a piece of course. Um, and a little bit on it. I'll show you what that looks like. So you see it's just towards the back. That way we'll be able to taste some without it when we get to it. 
Next up, number three, is your washed rye and cheese. I just cut, went ahead and pre-cut some of these, so we'll put that one on. And we are pairing that with salami, and I'm gonna show you a little pro tip for salami. And of course, this will probably not go well, but um, most of the outside of salamis you can eat. You're gonna see a lot of beautiful blue molding, green molding, that's all part of their caves and their aging facilities. But for this experiment, let's take it off. So if you just score it down the side, and then you score it around this way. Let's see, I should have pre-done it so that you didn't have to wait on me. Then you should, in theory, be able to just peel it all the way off. Awesome, it worked more or less. Okay, so now that we got that, um, I'm gonna put, because I'm being generous and this is a big stick of salami, I'm gonna put three slices on, on one plate because we'll have room to do a lot more. All right, next up is our semi-soft cheese. Again, following our menu, that is your Oso Irati. It is labeled. So this is a big piece of cheese, depending on what format you may get it. I'm probably gonna do it this way. Again, doing it for fours, but you wouldn't need to do that. So somebody will get this longer rind piece, but they still have a lot of paste to work with as well. And it turns out, I love this rind, we'll talk about it later. Let's pair that with this chocolate, these little Askinosi chocolates you get. I think it looks better when you crack it and kind of do some little crumbles up on it. Um, I like, I'm a woman of indulgence, I like a little pile there. And there should be four itty bitty bars in your box if you didn't get them all, go searching again. Yes, let me show you. There are four of these little chocolate itty bitty bars and on one of our other pairings, there's four of these caramels. So you might have to go like Easter egg hunting down in there. Um, next up is our goat gouda. I already pre-cut a little wedge of this. So that is on our board. And we are pairing that with our caramel. I like having somebody just hand me stuff off the side whose arm just comes in there. So caramel, just placing it right on top in the back. I'll show it to you again, all right. Then um, we're doing our dalmatinac. So you might have to play a little um, move things over and squish them in. All right, and our Dalmatinac has a chocolate covered cashew on it, this Piedras de Luna. Again, there's a big, this is a big jar, so I'd go ahead and put a couple on there if you want. And then, sometimes if you like really visually making things pretty, it's fun to crack that open so you can see inside on the cashew nut. Um, then we're the last but not least to plate is your blue cheese. This is wrapped inside cheese paper, inside foil. That's so it doesn't weep and sweat into the cheese paper when it's traveling and getting moisture on it. So I've just cut this wedge all the way down. And we're pairing that today um, with these Effie's oat cakes that we'll talk about later. So go ahead, there's two in there, so you'll have to do a half each. And then again, I like to break it up and put those on there. Last but not least, you can leave your crackers on, um, leave them off the plate or put them on. I'll show you what it looks like with them off. Here is your cheese plate, ta-da! Or sometimes it just makes it look like bountiful. And I like things in threes, so I'd probably just do three in the middle and voila! Um, you wanna come on in, John, and hold it up? So this is what it will look like when we get started tasting today with your fresh chef at your 12 o'clock. You'll set up everybody's placemats to have their menu. This at 12 o'clock, if they're drinking their wine, and then we'll be ready to go. Thanks guys, I'll see you for Cheese 101 later.